Well, climate change is uh, very unjust because the most of the suffering will be the poor, uh, particularly who have to farm uh, to get enough food, and when their crop fails, uh, they suffer disease and, and malnutrition. So, you know, the speed with which this needs to be done is, is very daunting. Well, we've set ambitious goals, uh, you know, trying to get to zero by 2050. Um, you know, some countries are on board uh, and making progress with that, but, you know, when you have global problems, it's tough to get everyone, not just every country, but every sector of emissions uh, to move quickly. I mean, when we're doing meetings about uh, clean steel, clean cement, you know, the location we're in or, you know, the, the wealth that created uh, uh, the, the economic success here, that's not influencing this. I mean, we're here to get carbon emissions to zero as fast as we can. And to cancel out my footprint, I wouldn't claim in any way, uh, you know, that means I can leave the problem alone because I should use my skills and money to drive innovation, you know, so that this problem doesn't just get solved for my emissions, it gets solved for everyone's emissions. You know, I hope uh, more people of wealth get involved in this, uh, just like, you know, I hope they get involved in philanthropy in general and global health. Uh, you know, I do think those who are the luckiest, and I'm certainly in that group, we owe a lot. Uh, to the society that created that framework and you know we should should have a, a long-term view of how how we make a contribution you know we did create Gavi to buy vaccines we did create global fund to buy bed nets to reduce malaria deaths and so we should be doing more the idea of helping the poor countries reducing inequity you know I'm always impatient that that we're not doing enough there. But people shouldn't lose sight of the fact that in the climate area and in the health area, uh, the human condition can continue to improve.